I was born in a smallish city called Prostyov. My town had just one tiny museum and few historical artifacts. There were no art stores, no galleries for inspiration. Besides, my elementary art teacher, I knew no other artists. The first time I remember feeling any need towards creativity was at the age of six, when uh, I saw a set of colored markers in my local paper shop. I thought they were the greatest things I've ever seen. While standing with my mom on a line for bananas, all Czechs know what that means. <laughs> okay, I lost myself now. I imagined how amazing it would be to have them all to myself. On the way home, I picked up a piece of coal and an old brick and scribbled with them on sidewalk, imagining there were those called markers. A few weeks later, I was rushed into emergency surgery with inflamed appendix. And upon waking from my anesthesia, the first thing that I saw in front of me, besides the blurry faces of my parents, were my new colored markers. I then spent 10 days in a hospital, happily scribbling away my aches and pains to a speedy recovery. One of my favorite things as a kid was to go to the dump and collect scrap metal. My friend and I would then assemble cool little sculptures from metal tubes, old mattresses, and old mattress springs, and those little metal curlies that machines shaved off. We would make costumes and put on plays for kindergarten kids. It was a clever way to get out of school. As a kid of Eastern Bloc, as kids of Eastern Bloc, we didn't grow up with advertisements, commercials, Disney channels, MTV, VCRs, or even phones. We ran to each other's houses and asked if our friends can come out to play. We were pure and inventive. In 1987, when I was 12, my family jumped the wall from Yugoslavia to Italy. We spent one night in a hotel with fluffy white towels and soap that smelled like lavender. The next day, due to a lack of visa, we willingly jumped the wall back. It was then explained to me why I couldn't talk about our Italian adventures at school, and for the first time I understood what it meant to fear a political system. <laughs> Two years later, the communist system fell and the borders opened. We won green cards in the lottery, and off to America we went. We moved to the suburbs of Boston, and I was 17 at the time. I imagined America would be like the movie Grease. I felt disappointed, I was homesick and lost. <laughs> One day, I stumbled into a basement of my suburban high school and found an art room. My last two years of school, I spent making sculptures, drawing, painting. Art saved me. After graduation, I ended up at Hunter College in New York City. I carried with me the stigma that art won't feed me, so I um, chose to major in film and photography, but then yet again ended up finding the art room and choosing my minor in art. I was lucky to have the great Emily Mason as my art teacher. She would let us come to her Manhattan studio, teach us to make our own paint, and let us use her art supplies. She had a lovely blue eyes and a beautiful soul. Once I used up all my art and photography credits, I dropped out and went to work in film as a makeup artist. Um, again, I painted, this time on faces. Then I got married, had two kids, and continued to do things with my hands. I had Etsy shop and made soft sculptures out of felted wool. From there, I went to establish a small textile studio called Juni with my good friend Julie. We made bags, pillows, dresses, and upcycled vintage. All the designs are directly painted on fabric. While working with my older daughter on her high school portfolios, I got, I got the bag again. I started to draw and paint. I decided to drop the self-doubt and the stigma I had about art. My style has evolved and still evolving from small drawings of Czech Venus to eventually more abstract works on canvas, wood, and paper. I work from intuition, from whatever and whatever is in my head. I often need change, and in art, I can allow for the change to happen. During Black Lives Matter protest, I went on to uh, paint several murals on the plywood on boarded up stores in Soho, or downtown New York. Uh-oh. 
This was life-changing, and I had never painted on such a large surface before. This was the crucial step, which led to more opportunities. I was selected as one of 60 artists to paint a life-size fiberglass cow for the New York City Cow Parade to raise money for a nonprofit organization called God's Love We Deliver. Painting a 3D object was a great challenge, and I learned a lot. This fall, I participated in a spring break art show where I, was, I had a solo exhibit curated by René Ricardo, who's here somewhere. Uh, in my work, on focus mainly on botanical themes, um, and I feel it's important for me to stay true to myself and to my roots. I often struggle with the feeling of being a nomad. I think it's, it naturally appears in my work. I favor bold colors and shapes. I travel between the figurative and the abstract because what the hell, I'm an artist and I don't have to decide. There are no limits to art and my intuition will guide me. Thank you.